You already have Nike. Might as well endorse for Nike. Yeah, that's exactly. True. My wardrobe was surrounded with Nike, so I was kind of bummed. I was like, ah, uh, like, do I have to really like settle for this? I was like, I was like, it's still a sponsorship, but I was like, I know I don't want it, right? Yeah. And then another um do you guys know titan so titan is basically the Foot Locker of canada right or okay. the Foot Locker of the philippines, philippines right okay. so mm-hmm. they have all the exclusive releases and stuff like that's kind of like a house of hoops so then they they offered me to be a part of the group and then they so i wouldn't be tied down to a brand so i could wear adidas i could wear nike i could wear under armor it's basically getting like a Foot Locker sponsorship essentially Mm-hmm. And that one I was really excited for because my boyfriend, he's a part of them. Mm-hmm. He's a part of the Titan group. So then I've obviously seen like how it is. So basically the process is you go into the store, you have to pick out three to four pairs of shoes, you have to pick out like $200 worth of apparel, and then you're out. And then you get to do that like every month. I was like, oh, you know, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. So then I told my coach, I was like, um, I was like, I don't want to sign with Nike. I was like, I want to sign with them. Like, Nike's not doing anything for me anymore. I was like, they were just like, you know, they were just talking big, right? And then next thing you know, that same night, I got a call. And Nike was like, oh, we were just finalizing the contract. You know, we were talking to our guys overseas just to make sure everything. I was like, yeah, okay, just because someone else wanted me. Now you want me. But I was like, I'm still going to sign with you because you're Nike. You know what I mean? <laughs> so then, yeah, fast forward. I've done a Nike commercial like it was a commercial for kind of like abs cbn as well so that was really fun i did that i like spoke at like a a run like you know nike train or nike running club like they had an event so then like they made me dress up and then like i like talked i was like like i don't even run myself i was like because i'm a fraud I was like, <laughs> right here. It, was so <laughs> out. Nike training club. it had to be nike running club specifically <laughs> yeah it was nike running club i was like i, I train i don't run i had to talk yeah. to these people about like my experience it was like like i'm barely gonna use these running shoes guys i was like i'm not the person to ask <laughs> and then um, yeah it's just been a great time i mean like i love being with nike i guess like it's just because it's a global brand you know what i mean like that's what kind of made me pick them over titan like the, their reach is insane. Like one of my events for Kobe week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I got to speak on a panel with like three other, like two other athletes, um, Jimmy Pug, if you guys know, like, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, yeah, he's really popular, him. And then some of the big hosts from the Philippines. And then I ended up talking about obviously like Kobe's involvement in women's leagues and stuff like that and how he kind of like, put a bunch of respect on like women's sports in general and then I guess I said this like one line I still don't remember what it was but then like it ended up being in like um so every month they have like a global like I guess a recap from each country where mm-hmm. they talk to each other like send emails and stuff so like like they put like my line in it and like everyone like loved it I was like the copyrighted that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, your I slogan. Need to get this line because I don't know what it is, but apparently it meant. Wait, you're the right? one who created "Just Do It." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's cool. It was it was Kobe a big inspiration to you? I mean, could you talk about maybe when you realized like that tragic? Like, what's the first thing you thought of when you know Kobe you know passed? Like, I know everyone's um, emotional about it. I, I didn't even, yeah. I had to, like, Google it, like, 20 times because I thought it was just, like, yeah. uh, a fake news, right? Because it happened, I guess, nighttime where you guys were, right? Mm-hmm. And then my sister called me, and my sister was like, Kobe died. And I was like, I have a friend named Kobe. So I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? She's like, no, Kobe's dying. And I was like, no. at first I was like, what do you mean? And then when she said Kobe died, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, that doesn't make sense. You know, it was one of those things where it's just, like, you can't, you can't fathom that something like that happens to a person of such high caliber, you know, but then um, for me, what stood out to Kobe, like what stood out about Kobe was just his work ethic. Like um, that was like a big thing for me and just the way he kind of like, um, he kind of went through the game and the way he like analyzed every little thing, like to little bumps on the court, like he knew refs blind spots and stuff like that. Like the attention to detail that he had about the game was just, something that I really respected him for. And then more recently, the reason why 
I obviously like I had a a greater love for Kobe was because of his involvement in women's sports and the way he you know brought it up Gigi like a big talking point that me and a lot of the other advocates in the Philippines talk about was how um, how Kobe not necessarily took the light from Gigi but he kind of was just a supporting role in her journey as a female athlete like you know you don't really see that right as someone who's like holds the most all-star MVPs has all these championships and stuff like that for you to be like a supporting role in your daughter's own journey and to show that women's sports should always be respected and stuff like that um I don't know it just goes to show a lot about his character and how much like if your idol is supporting the game like what more are you to not be supporting as well you know um in in terms of um your journey there like what was it how did it kind of start for you when you arrived in the Philippines tell us kind of the whole like kind of the adjustment that you went through or the kind of experience that you felt like was memorable at this point that you could share to maybe um, kids that are watching a show or the people that are you know, aspiring or women kids uh, that are girls that are aspiring to either play professionally or with school or to the Philippines um, okay so for me um, I've made that big move already so in trend in like high school especially so the move wasn't too difficult for me but I could see for a lot of people how they would struggle with that because especially with um I guess like the language barrier like for me I comp- I understand all Tagalog but like for other people like we have imports who can barely understand English so like obviously I know like that's a big struggle and for me um one of the biggest transitions was the style of play and like adjusting to being a bigger guard in the game but only being used as a shooter so that was a little weird. So during the season, I was mostly um, just around the paint, like around the three point line. I was like spot up shooter. So hopefully next season, whenever that is, like I want to transition my game into playing more inside, inside out. But otherwise, I think everyone on the team was really welcoming. Like it was convenient because me and my boyfriend got together like maybe like two months into like when I in two months into when I came here. So, you know, I had someone I could talk to all the time and stuff like that and someone who could really help me adjust. And then his family, um, his dad's like a really good PBA player who, like a retired PBA player. So their whole family is like a bunch of athletes and stuff. So I always had like a good support system, especially throughout this quarantine. So they've been super welcoming and stuff like that. So, I mean, my advice is really setting yourself up with good people. Like it doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to befriend everybody especially me like I'm not the type to befriend everybody I'm just like rather stick to the sidelines and kind of watch but it's important to kind of build that relationship where your teammates and your coaches respect you enough to like you know call you out when you need to be and then also like give you an opportunity to shine and stuff like that let's see advice for girls who want to do the same um it's a lot of Self, it takes a lot of self-reflection, I think, to kind of know if you're ready for that jump. I mean, I know a lot of people, especially guys, actually, who've done this, then done this transition where they, you know, I'm sure you guys know a bunch of them as well, who've come to the Philippines and then went back just because, like, you know, it's not it's not the right thing for them and stuff like that. They don't enjoy it. So you just have to really keep an open mind. Um, not everything's going to go the way you want, obviously. You're obviously going to go through a lot of bad things like you know especially if you go through an injury like that would suck especially if you're kind of just transitioning into a whole new role but god forbid that happens it's just a good support system especially even having a support system in Canada like my family is always down to talk they want to talk to me more than I want to talk to them but you know that's a good thing you know you always want people who kind of support your decision especially if they're way out there and you know not necessarily the norm yeah i guess you would say like the normal straight direction i think that's a perfect uh time to end this part one uh thank you camille uh we learned a lot about you know we caught up after the three years but there's still more to talk about just about basketball in general in part two so make sure you stay tuned for the continuation of this episode uh that ends panoi bounce stay ballin'.